A controversial end to the Victorian Sports Car Championship after defending series champion Ted Hugland was taken out of the final race on the start line. Hugland was alongside the car of Paul Whitmarsh when the white Porsche suddenly veered into the side of the Lamborghini, breaking a steering arm and ending Hugland's race and championship hopes. With Hugland out of contention, Justin McMillan took the title in his first full year of motorsport competition. I set a goal of top five and this is uh, unbelievable, especially missing one round, but look, um, not really happy how it ended. Commiserations for Ted, I thought it would be a good tough round, tough race, the last one. Um, but yeah, yeah, picked it up and we're happy that we, uh, we took the titles. Cars seem to be a little bit off the pace this weekend compared with usual. I mean, you normally ride up the front and dominant in some places, but you seem to be just a, a little bit back in the pack. What was the problem? Yeah, we had a miss with the car. We couldn't work it out all weekend. Um, I was a bit off the pace too myself, but in the uh, last race there, the engine light come on and uh, yeah, it was a bit disappointing. But um, no, we'll come back next year, bigger and better. The weekend's outright points went to another Lamborghini driver in Mark Siemens who had three great races with Jamie Augustine in Richard Bendel's wild-looking Daytona Coupe. Dean Cam in his Trans Am Corvette was the man to beat in sports sedans, coming from behind to win two of the three races. Ian Cowley took out Saturday's first race held in wet conditions. The final round of the sports sedan championship will be the 50k plate at Island Magic at the end of November. It was a heartbreaking week for 16-year-old Victorian Formula Ford driver Adrian Lazaro. First, he lost US karting teammate and mentor Dan Weldon. Then he lost the Cairns Victorian Formula Ford Championship at the final hurdle. Lazaro led the series coming into the final round and looked set to take the title until a collision with veteran racer Brian Sampson at Turn 1 ended his race. The DNF and an outright second to fellow teenager Lachlan Marshall gave Marshall the crown. Yeah, well, it's a great feeling actually. Um, didn't think I was going to get the four round uh, this weekend, but um, you know, things happen and it's motorsport and I'm really lucky. So had, before you went into the weekend, you were what, back in third position? Yeah, I think I was in third position, about 25 points down on Adrian Lazaro. So yeah, it's been really good. So you come over and uh, you, won, you were out, basically out there by uh, by yourself without the Duratec cars. We had a couple of Duratec cars, yeah, was, but uh, yeah, there was only one Duratec this weekend, so there was no real crashing or anything. It was pretty, it was a clean weekend. It was good. So would you like to see that sort of situation continue? Would you like to see the Kens have their own category in the state round and uh, leave the Duratecs to run national? Yeah, well, we had that at Sandy, and I think in the second, in the third round, and that was really good. The Kent race was really clean. It, it rained a lot, and it was a pretty hard race, but. You know, there was no real crashes or anything, so it was really good. So if you look back on the history of the Cairns Victorian Formula 4 Championship, no, lots of names that you yeah. know from V8 supercars, very famous names. Yeah, what are your plans for the future? Well, we're, we're racing F3 next year in the national class, um, so that'll be good. And um, hopefully we'll do the championship class the year after and then see where that takes us. Maybe overseas, maybe to the Career Cup or something like that. With the national championship teams and drivers racing on the Gold Coast, it was left to Dylan Richter to take the weekend uncontested in the Duratec class. A big crash marred the HQ races at the island when the car of Dave Peters hit the pit wall hard coming onto the main straight. Peters' car then bounced into the path of David Page who had nowhere to go. The force of the crash severely damaged both cars but the driver suffered no major injuries. Fraser Ross dominated the historic touring cars. His Mustang won all three races to beat the consistent Gary Edwards in a Tirana GTR XU1 and Leo Tobin in another Mustang. Absolutely magnificent. Driving something so powerful, it's just been great. It's been a really big learning experience as well. I have driven with slicks before, but today to actually drive in a car with slicks and wings, it's fabulous. So, you know, how different is it? Because you come out of you know, a background of you've driven a lot of open wheels, including Formula 3, and then suddenly you get into this big, heavy, 500 horsepower V6 there. How much difference is it to drive? I think it's a lot different, actually. This, this car, as you said, it is a lot heavier. Um, but having said that, I still think it, it turns well, it brakes well, it handles magnificently. Um, but all in all, it is... It's, just the characteristics of the car, you know, you've got to, to deal with a, a, the body roll and the chassis movements, but um, all in all, it's coming together really well. 
so do you think this is you going next year into the Aussie race cars? I mean, in, in, in one way, they're somewhat similar. I mean, you know, a tube frame chassis, a mid-engine, a uh, full body. Um, do you think there's any transfer there? Anything you're going to learn there? Or are they just so totally uh, different in again? In all in all, I don't think so. I think when I start in Aussie race cars, it's going to be a clean slate, which uh, I think next year's going to be a little bit difficult, though. We, I've never driven an Aussie race car before. But, uh, look, I'm just going to have to put my head down first thing next year and try and learn as much as I can with the Aussie race cars. My name is Anne Evans. I'm a partner. I'm a director and I'm also the head of uh, administration of the company. I think the best thing about my job is I get a lot of responsibility to do things the way I think they should be done. Uh, every day I get to fabricate something different and interesting. Best thing about my job is helping customers. Customer service is the key to keeping our customers here satisfied. Customer service is important to Dino Dynamics to keep people coming back to us. Describe Dino Dynamics in one word, great.